What's good, y'all? I'm at Seek 2019 with... Hey, yo. Paul J. Kim. Paul, it's a pleasure to be here with you, man. Thank you again for doing this uh, quick interview. The pleasure is mine. Like <laughs> they say at Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is lit. Um, so I want to just ask a quick question. Um, when I say the word chastity, what is the first word or thought that comes to your head? Chastity is a blast, you see. If you keep doing that, you get no STDs. <laughs> hey, yo. That's a wrap. 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 We're done. Hey yo, hey yo. <laughs> and that's all I gotta say about that. Um. <laughs> okay, so listen, uh, <laughs> you might have to edit this a little bit. <laughs> Woo! Okay, um, so when I think about chastity, ultimately, uh, chastity is the ability to honor the gift of sexuality that God has given each of us, right? It's about self-control. It's about not allowing this gift, which is like a warm fire. Warm fire is nice in a fireplace. It's not nice when it's burning down your house. And you're on Dr. Phil, okay? <laughs> so ultimately, it's it's the, the plan of God's uh, gift of sexuality in your life, because ultimately that leads to whatever vocation you have in life. So that's what I think about. Awesome. Um, why do you believe it's so hard for us young people to practice chastity today? Because of the government. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I agree. That's a good no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Something's in the water. Uh, <laughs> No, I mean, let, I mean, let's be real. Like, you know, sexual desire is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. I mean, that's how we're literally standing here. Don't think about that too long. <laughs> oh! No, but really, it's like God gave us those desires. You know, the first commandment to Adam and Eve was bear fruit and multiply. Hello. It's pretty hardwired. You know, this desire for intimacy and sexuality and the sexual like act is not just physical, it's deeply spiritual. And that's the problem because so much in our culture, it's like they get stuck on the physical and they don't surpass that level. They're just living on an animal type of level. You feel me? They forget that it's a deeply spiritual thing that's meant to unite and bond. And ultimately that expression of love is supposed to manifest into children, right? But in our culture, and I'm just preaching to the choir because you guys know this, but when you divorce sexuality from its intended purpose, then you get so much drama and so many issues in our culture. And, and, and that's, that's partially the problem with it. Um, so anyways. Yeah. So what does chastity look like on a daily basis for you as a father and as a husband? Yeah. Well, uh, contrary to popular belief, people think, oh, I'll get married, then I won't have to deal with chastity no more. No, actually, it doesn't stop till you're dead. <laughs> and apparently, you don't stop wrestling with chastity issues till you're dead for three days. <laughs> um, it's that powerful. Yeah. Your hand comes out of the grave. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, as a, as a married man, um, obviously my wife is gorgeous, she's beautiful, you know, God knew me, he knew that I needed like a hot wife, so like, I just look at her and be like, <laughs> I love you. Um, but more than that, she's just an amazing woman, and honestly, um, the, the, the truth is, regardless how beautiful your marriage is, you have to practice chastity every day, right? It starts in your marriage because ultimately love is willing the good of the other. Lust has nothing to do with a marriage, or it shouldn't, because lust is about using the other. So people think that, oh, I'm married, I can like fulfill all my sexual desires because I've been hooked on porn for years. Like, you're out of your mind. That's going to destroy your marriage. And that's where our culture's at. And then also, um, just because you're married to a beautiful woman, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden your sexual desire goes away and you don't find other people attractive. That is real. And so chastity is that virtue that allows you to respond in a wise and loving and truthful way in all of those circumstances where it's like, okay, da 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 da, pretty lady, beautiful woman, <laughs> not my wife. Let's keep going. You know? Basically basic, but there's truth in that. That, you know, chastity orders your life in such a way where you practice authentic love. That's what it's about. And it doesn't end. And it doesn't matter if you're married. It doesn't matter if you're single. It doesn't matter if you're uh, a priest or religious celibate. Like, every vocation, it's like you have to practice chastity. And if you don't, you get the destruction that we see in our culture and the church and the world. Yeah. <laughs> Last question, brother. Um, 
What role do you see chastity playing in the healing of our culture today, and especially with young people? So much of it, so much of the healing that takes place in the world and in families has to do precisely with chastity. Um, and I'll just, you know, basically quote drop St. John Paul II. It's not really a quote, it's just a summary. But he explained in his Theology of the Body that, you know, uh, the world is built upon countries. Countries are built upon nations. Nations are built upon states. States are built upon cities. Cities are built upon communities. Communities are built upon neighborhoods. Neighborhoods are built upon families. And families, like the, the nucleus of the family, is the husband and the wife. And the marital act. Sex. Because that's where families grow and life comes from. So if you get that wrong, you get everything wrong. That's the truth. That's like the macro way of looking at it. Um, so in the micro, like which would involve us, figuring out in our lives how to best live out chastity is huge because that's the path that leads to peace. That's the path that leads to authentic love. Because when you turn on the news, you see a whole generation of people who are hurting. You know, it's like their families are, are troubled. They're, you know, no one does stupid things because their life is perfect. You know. But at the same time, when love has been void in their experience, when their family's a mess or, or whatever's going on, it's just, it leads to so much heartache and so much negativity, it's like a ripple effect. But when people dig deep and they say, you know what, I want to live out not only chastity, but so many other virtues that this world needs, it's like they become the change. They, they stop the negative ripple effect and they, the, the positive ripple effect kind of eclipses that, you know. Um, so anyways, that's my encouragement, that's my thought. Have a nice day. <laughs> Paul, thank you again, man. Hey. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Yeah, of course, brother. Right. Thank you again.